Hello everyone, Nova here. Today I'm going to be talking about All-Star Superman, specifically issue number one, uh, the series in general, and the Absolute Edition, and more so Absolute Editions in general for anyone that is curious. So for those of you that don't know or have never read this story, uh, All-Star Superman is written by Grant Morrison with artwork from Frank Quitely. Uh, if you don't know who they are, they're superstars in the industry. I highly recommend you read anything written by Grant Morrison and anything drawn by Frank Quitely. You will not be disappointed. So as you can see here, this is the slipcase that the book comes in. This is the spine. And I'll get into more depth after I've talked about issue number one in the series in general. So issue number one of All-Star Superman starts off with uh, Dr. Quintum and his crew. They're basically approaching the surface of the sun, trying to get a piece of it for research. And what we see happening is one of the crew members starts transforming into a human bomb. Now this happens, surprisingly, no one obviously expects this. And who comes to save the day but Superman? So we see Superman saving the crew. But then the Morrison jumps to the Daily Planet where we see Perry White giving us basically a breakdown of what's been happening in the universe, more specifically with Lex Luthor. Um, he's in jail, uh, mostly because he's been creating dams, uh, siphoning water, just creating an overall shortage that he would be able to obviously profit from. It's Lex Luthor. And so for this reason, he's currently in jail. Now what we find out shortly after is that He's now working for the government, Lex Luthor, uh, helping them create weapons and such. But it turns out Luthor has his own plans. We find out this human bomb is actually Luthor's. He programmed it, he is sending messages and initiating sequences through basically the technology that the government has given him. So Superman steps in. Of course, he saves the day, uh, saves the crew. And what's really interesting is we see him extend his bioelectric field and basically pull the shuttle uh, with its crew to safety. Now this is something Superman had never done before. It's not a regular power that he has. So obviously Dr. Quintum, uh, who is part of the project's uh, organization, starts testing Superman because he's developing new powers. His strength is tripled. Uh, he's able to see things, he's, he's able to see his cells and what they're doing, but he's just the amount of testing they can do isn't enough to determine his new thresholds. But what we find out now is that by being so close to the sun, his cells are oversaturated. And basically what's happened is Superman now has super cancer, you could call it. And he's dying. And I just want to take a break from going through the issue and say that this is probably one of the more interesting uh, problems that Superman has had and what it leads to is absolutely spectacular. I'll get into that later when I talk about the series in general. So Morrison goes through, I won't go into too much depth, he goes through projects, resources and such and then we cut back to the Daily Planet again and we see Perry saying okay Clark's late again you know he's gonna be fired and what's fantastic here is we see the huge difference between Clark Kent and Superman. We see a panel of Superman, you know, there's a kid chasing a dog with a truck about to hit him. We see Superman flying in uh, as Perry is counting down, you know, five seconds until he's fired. And then we see Clark run in and we see him stumbling. We see him trip over something, catch a coffee, put it on a desk, you know. And it's great because you don't just see, you know, Superman put on a pair of glasses and that's it. You see mannerisms that are completely different. Even his posture is, is very different. And Quitely does a fantastic job of differentiating Superman from Clark Kent. So as the story progresses, we find out, you know, the story ends with Luther saying, okay, you know, they're taking me back to jail for trying to kill Dr. Quintum and his team. He says, you know, it's good, get me before I do something bad, which he has. He's essentially going to kill Superman. So now what we have here in the epilogue is Superman and Lois Lane walking. What happens is, it stops her, he says, Lois, we need to talk. You know, just stop what you're doing. I have something I need to tell you. As he's pulling his shirt open, 
and you just see her groceries drop it's just it's fantastic it's what you would expect it's what you would envision when you think of Clark revealing his identity as Superman and now the real the real interesting part the one panel that I really liked in this issue was just one of Superman just his face and he says you know, no one must know, not yet. There are things I have to do first. And now I'm going to talk about the series in general because this panel itself is, you know, it's so subtle. There are things I have to do first. And I just got to say, what Morrison does in this storyline is incredible. He puts Superman through 12 trials, and some of them are subtle. You know, you won't realize it until afterwards, but some of them are so awesome and just things I would never in my, in my life imagine you know, putting a character like this through. So more on the feats, you know, just in general, the storyline, a little, I'm just going to drop a few things that happen. Uh, we have Jimmy Olsen fighting Superman. We have a Super Lois. We have Superman answering the unanswerable question. We see a lot of characters like Samson and Atlas, and they have physical challenges, and it's just, there's so much going on in this storyline, and it's all, it's all very hopeful, despite the fact that Superman is dying and you know these are his last days and what he's doing with it is spectacular. It's what you realize this is you know what everyone complains about Superman being all-powerful but when you read a story like this you realize this is a story that you could only tell with Superman and nobody else because of his character because of his personality his power set this is a story that no other character in the comic in comics in general could be put through and could be written. It's just not possible. I highly recommend you read this story. There are a lot of emotional high points. There's a lot of wacky stuff that happens, a lot of fun. It's by far the best Superman story. One of the best stories in general that I've ever read. It's the reason I purchased the Absolute Edition. So let's dig into the Absolute Edition itself. Here we have, I'm showing the dust jacket. Uh, it's just the regular cover that you would get with the trade paperback, for example. On the back, we have this, which is another great moment in the story. Underneath the dust jacket, just simply Superman. This is the spine underneath the dust jacket. Looks really nice and clean. This is the back. So for those of you that are wondering, Absolute Editions are the biggest, the biggest edition that DC publishes. As you can see here is a regular hardcover uh, with an omnibus right behind it. it and then there's the absolute, which is just towering over both of them. So you see this artwork. Here's the spines just for a bigger, a different point of view. You see artwork in a detail that is just, it, it's astonishing. Especially some, someone like Frank Quitely or imagine getting a Jim Lee like this. You just, you can't stop looking at it. It is just so absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend it. I, it's a big investment to get an Absolute Edition. And if you're buying it, you're most likely buying it for a story that you know and you love and you would like to experience at the absolute best level you can. And this gives it, this delivers it insanely. Now, one thing that I personally love, um, I don't know if people are big fans of these, but extra content. Uh, a lot of this is written by Grant Morrison, of course. He gives you in-depth looks at characters, obviously Superman. Um, you see sketches by Quitely showing the difference between his Superman and Clark Kent. Like you can see, there's a, there's a big artistic change here. It's not just him putting glasses on. It's a completely different personality and uh, in di completely different characteristics. You get more in-depth descriptions for characters like Samson, Atlas, uh, and various others that I don't want to spoil completely. Yeah, you get more background detail, you get, a, you get scripts, which are always just insane to look at. It's, there's so much work put into these things that a lot of us maybe don't consider, but it's just astonishing to read these. So, in general, would I recommend getting an Absolute Edition? Of course. They are pricey. Uh, I paid $70 on Amazon for this. It's about 350 pages, but like I said, if it's a story you know you love, you know you're probably going to read more than once, which I know I am. This is I blew through this on the first day I got it, and I, I'm going to get more. I will probably get more Absolute Editions after witnessing this one. Uh, for those of you that have never read All-Star Superman, and you may dislike Superman, I highly recommend you read it. Go into it you know, with, with a semi-positive attitude, or no expectations at all would be the best. 
and just let it take you in. Grant Morrison is a fantastic writer. Uh, he seldom disappoints, and I just absolutely love this story. Okay, thank you all for listening. I hope this didn't drag on too long, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.